Hello future parents, today's video is all about the active phase of labor, also known as the dilating phase or the famous established labor. We're gonna go and see together what does it really mean, why this phase has so many names and how can we better cope with it. Let's go! Welcome back to my channel! This video continues a series of videos all related to the stages and the different phases of labor. So if you've not seen the first one all related to the early labor, make sure to check it out and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the videos if you like this series so you don't miss any other videos on my channel. My name is Ilenia and I've been a midwife for the past 6 plus years helping women all over the world during their pregnancy, birth and postpartum journey. In the previous video about early stage of labor, we saw how this phase can last sometimes even a few days and it can be easily mistaken with the prodromal labor because it's so hard to understand when really the contractions are becoming regular and when they have a change in your cervix. That is what determines the difference between early labor and prodromal labor and then we're never gonna know that your early labor was actually early labor until you are in active labor. I hope it makes sense. And I don't recommend to check your service at home by yourself, absolutely don't do it and don't focus too much about it. But as I was saying in the other video, make sure that you're able to understand when the contractions are becoming a bit more regular, a bit more long, when they're starting to stop from doing what you were doing and when you just cannot do other activities as you were doing before in early labor. In early labor I really recommend you to completely ignore it and sleep as much as you can because when the moment that you cannot ignore it comes then probably you're very very close to be in established labor. And it is called in this way because it is unlikely to go back to early labor when labor is established is really there to stay and to bring you to the end of it. So what does really happen is your cervix from being 4 cm dilates up to 10 cm and your contractions that until this point have been every 3 to 5 minutes, 30 seconds long, now they become a bit more frequent with the interval. They come every 2 to 4 minutes and they last up to 60 seconds, 45 to 60 seconds. It is the moment in labor where you have to start thinking about going into the hospital when the contractions have this kind of pattern or to call your midwife if you're planning a home birth. This is because when you are in active and established labor, we need to monitor your well-being and maybe well-being a bit closely. And by this, I mean monitoring the heart rate of your baby every 15 minutes by the sonicade, which is an ultrasound that we use to listen to the heart rate, or the continuous monitor if you have any condition that implies that you need to be monitor, baby's heart rate needs to be monitored a little bit closely during labor. This phase can last a few hours, usually generally speaking if it's your first labor it can last up to 12 hours, usually not more than 18 hours. If it's your second, third, fourth baby then is likely to last between 5 to 8 hours but not longer than 12 hours usually. Again I want to mark this sentence, labor math does not exist. Every woman is personal, every labor is different, so although we have some ranges that we use to understand how labor is going, please don't focus too much on the hours, they're just there to understand if something is deviating from the physiology of labor. Um, the NICE guideline now suggests that a dilatation of half centimeter an hour is considered to be normal and physiological, so please don't focus too much on the hours. So physically speaking we saw what's happening into your body, your cervix is dilating from 4 to 10 centimeters and a facing if the facing was not completed before during the early labor and your contractions are becoming more regular. But why I don't like to call this phase the dilating phase is that because not all the focus is on your cervix, there are so much things that are happening in your body and with your baby that really calling this phase the dilating phase or the established labor really just puts the focus on the physical thing that is happening in active labor while there is so much more. For example, from the emotional point of view, you go from being from excited and sometimes even fearful during your early labor because you're excited that it's finally there, at the same time you don't know what is gonna happen, you don't know how it's gonna long, you go into being a bit more tired in active labor, a bit more restless and you have to use really really a lot of energy. 
Baby as well is working a lot and hard in this part to engage and rotate better in the pelvis. We know that the best position for baby is being a down cephalic with the chin tucked into their chest and in an anterior position, meaning with the head towards the pubic bone of your pelvis. This is because it's the best position in order to have their shorter diameter facing the larger, the longest diameter of your pelvis and therefore to have a quicker labor. So we don't want to reach full dilatation, meaning 10 centimeters, with a baby that is not in the right position. That's why you have to work together with your baby to make sure that he or she is facilitated to rotate in the better position. How do you do so? Well, this is why active labor probably is the word that I like to be associated the most with this phase. As in compared to what I was saying in early labor that you have to ignore it, denial and sleep as much as you can in active labor, I want you to be active as the word says. You want to use the help of gravity, you want to use upright position and you want to move as much as you can, change position, ask to your midwife what position is better for you, use the shower, use the antenox, try to use all the tools that you add in your toolbox that you develop by attending antenatal classes during your pregnancy, this is the moment to use them all. It's also the moment where your birth partner needs to increase the support. Active labor really demands a couple effort. Um, the couple needs to stop and to do whatever they were gonna do and focus all the attention in the active stage of labor. The midwifery support also needs to increase, so please do ask your midwife for some help. That's what we're there for. We need to, we can massage you, we can help you to change position and to find a better position to help your baby to rotate. It's also the moment when you can start to do hypnobirthing if you're planning to do so, or generally speaking, use some relaxation techniques and use your breathing to help you with it. If you've not seen the video where I talk about breathing labor, please make sure to check it out because you really need to use the correct breath according to the phase of labor you are in. Other things that can happen during this phase of labor is that your water might break if they're not broken in early labor. And this is gonna help you a lot because it's gonna help baby to put more pressure on the cervix and to facilitate dilatation. And usually the water breaks when the baby is in the better position. So that's a great sign that active labor is really at the end. And also you're gonna feel an increase in the pressure in your pelvic area, in your rectal area. This is because as baby goes down in the pelvis is or she or he is more likely to put pressure on the rectum and therefore you feel an really really intense pressure that is going to become unbearable when the time to push comes so don't worry it is a symptom that is really really welcome and we liked when you said that you feel pressure in your back passage because it's when we know that your labor really really is progressing well birth is a journey and really requires you to surrender to it and just go with the flow and go with it try to internalize and really try to understand that active labor is there to finish and at the end of it you'll see your baby it's really a no coming back point in your pregnancy journey so it's something that needs to be welcomed and taken at your highest possibility together with the support of your midwife and your partner if you've liked the video make sure to subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next phase of labor where we're gonna talk about transition see you there bye bye